Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting, and effective. Thank you for joining me. So today we're going to be doing another interesting topic, acid-base regulation. And the reason for the regulation is so that you can have acid-base balance. All right? So, but before we go ahead, always remember that you're learning about how the body functions, which is what physiology is all about. And we teach you vital health lessons, life lessons, and even management lessons. All right, let's get started. So, acid-base regulation. Now, you ask yourself a question, why do you need to maintain a balance in the acidity or the alkalinity, which is what base, another name for a base, alkaline, of the body, okay? But let's start like this. You remember that about 70% of the Earth's surface is made up of water. That tells you that water is perhaps the most abundant compound on Earth. 70% of Earth's surface is water covering the Earth. So look at water very well. You find out that water has one molecule of oxygen, two molecules of hydrogen. And water is a universal, call it a universal solvent. A universal solvent. I mean, every solution, almost every solution you have, it's made up of water and different solute substances. So the same thing, everything you put in your mouth, everything contains water. Every single thing you take contains water, but more specifically, it contains hydrogen, it contains oxygen, any organic. So hydrogen is very, very abundant in the body. And the interesting thing is that when you're talking about acidity, we usually use the word pH. I'm sure this, is not a, this word is not strange to you, pH. So a pH scale is a measure of the acidity, alkalinity of a substance, which is actually a measure of hydrogen ion concentration. So how much hydrogen ion is in your body, your body fluids? You no, know, 60% of your body is made up of fluids. Your body fluid, both intracellular, extracellular, interstitial fluid, everybody fluid. The measure of hydrogen ion concentration in any solution is the measure of the pH or the measure of the acidity. And the pH is usually from 0 to 14, where 7 is regarded as neutral. For example, water is a neutral solution. Okay, so seven is neutral. And the pH of the normal pH of the body fluids, it's about 7.4. But it usually varies, you can have 7.37 to 7.42. So that's about the balance. So it tips a little towards this side. Okay, seven is the midpoint. So the normal pH of body fluid is a little slightly alkaline. So what the body tries to hover around this. So the next question you ask yourself, why does the body want to maintain pH? What's so special? Anytime you're talking about pH, you're talking about the hydrogen ion concentration. Okay? So why does the body want to maintain 
that balance in pH. Remember that maintaining balance is homeostasis. So there are ways the body tries to maintain that balance. And the secret about it is that the reason why we need balance in adrenaline is because the pH of the body fluids, that pH enzymes in the body, they are very delicate and sensitive to pH. Remember that the body, all physiological processes, they are dictated by the laws of physics and chemistry. So chemical reactions, millions of chemical reactions take place in the body. And that's what results in physiological process. Behind every physiological process, there is a biochemical reaction. Let's write it down. Let's use behind every physiological process there is a biochemical reaction very important and all biochemical reactions, they are catalyzed by enzymes. Enzymes. Catalyze biochemical reactions. All those biochemical, they are all catalyzed. That means they are activated. They are, the process is sped up made faster and very possible. Without enzymes, most of those reactions will be very slow. So enzymes are so important in physiology, okay? But you do more of enzymes in biochemistry, so we'll not go into the details and all those equations, okay? But those enzymes, they are proteins, and they are very sensitive to acidity. Two major things that enzymes, which are proteins, proteins are sensitive to acidity and temperature. So when the temperature is too high or too low, they become inactive. Most times they become denatured, okay? Especially when the temperature is too high, they can become denatured. The same thing when the acidity is too high or the alkalinity is too high, corrosive, they also become denatured. So. You have to know the purpose of these things. So I would not just jump into as the, know the background, the principle behind it. Everything is so that it can have an environment that is favorable for the millions of enzymes in the body. So that is why we need acid-base balance in the body. Okay? So the next thing we'll look at is how does the body now ensure this balance. So let's get right into it. Now, there is something called a buffer. Hmm? A buffer is a substance that helps to resist changes in pH. Okay? And a buffer is a substance that can accept hydrogen ion and also donate hydrogen ion. So depending on the situation, it can accept, it can take hydrogen ion and bind it to itself so that hydrogen ion is not left free to increase the acidity. Then when the, the acidity is getting uh, um, too much, it can also donate hydrogen ion, okay? So it can accept hydrogen ion so that hydrogen ion is not free. Then if the uh, um, alkalinity is increasing, it donates hydrogen ion in order to balance it. So that's what a buffer does. 
Okay, so an acid is any substance that gives hydrogen ion an alkaline or a base. It's any substance that accepts hydrogen ion. But a buffer does both. It can either give or accept depending on the situation. So a buffer is usually a weak acid and its conjugate base or a weak base and its conjugate acid. So this is the, the general equation of a buffer system. So it can go both ways. Now have H here. Okay, so this is the weak undissociated acid. And this is hydrogen ion. Then this could be any anion. Okay, so what happens is that when this is a weak acid, so when you have a strong acid added to this system, what happens? It now binds the hydrogen ion. So the equation will now shift to the left. Remember that it can go both ways. So it now shifts more to the left, which means that it is binding the hydrogen ion. You know, an acid gives off hydrogen ion. So when a strong acid is acid added to the system, it binds the hydrogen ion to this undissociated weak form. So it, by so doing, doesn't allow the uh, acidity to increase. Now, what happens when a strong base is added to the system? It goes the other way, okay? So, it forms H, combines with OH to form water, which stabilizes the system. So, it now makes it go towards the right so that more of this will be released that will now counteract that base. Remember that this is acid, okay? H, hydrogen ion is acid, right? So this is the background of acid-base buffer system, right? So what we are going to now talk about is the various buffers in the body that help to maintain stability in hydrogen ion concentration. So there are three lines of defense whenever there's instability. And instability in hydrogen ion concentration, there are three lines of defense in which the body uses to maintain and regulate the acid-base system, right? So the three lines of defense, one of them is chemical buffers in body fluids, that's one of them. Second line of defense is respiratory, respiratory buffer system. Then the third line of defense is the renal buffer system. Okay, so these are the three lines of defense. So these chemical buffers in the body fluids, they act very rapidly within seconds. The respiratory buffer system acts within minutes. The renal buffer system acts more slowly within hours to days, but it's the most powerful. Okay, so let us now discuss the chemical buffers in body fluids. So, like you know, body fluids, they are broadly divided into intracellular fluid, extracellular fluid. So the same way you have intracellular buffers, extracellular buffers. So that's how we're going to discuss it. So let's start with extracellular buffers. Okay, so ECF buffers. So the main extracellular fluid buffer, very abundant, is the bicarbonate, bicarbonate, and carbonic 
acid buffer. Okay, that is this is the general equation of the system. Sorry, C O three plus H. Okay, so and the interesting thing about this system is its relationship with carbon dioxide and water. Now, this itself easily dissociates to form CO2 plus water. So, it can always go both ways. CO2 and water can form this that easily dissociates to this, releasing hydrogen ion. Then this also can form this. All right, so that's how the buffer system works. If a strong acid is added to this system, what do you think will happen? It remember we said that it goes to the left to the undissociated. This is a weak acid, carbonic acid. It's a very weak, weak acid. This is the conjugate base. Okay, so if a strong acid is added, it forms this weak acid that now easily dissociates to form carbon dioxide and water. These two are now easily expired. When you are breathing, you are breathing out carbon dioxide and water. There's some water vapor that comes out when you breathe. So these two, they are easily expired and it leaves the system. By so doing, it brings the hydrogen ion concentration down. All right? Then if a strong base is added, it goes towards the right, which will release hydrogen ion concentration in order to increase the acidity. So that is how it maintains balance. It's very, very powerful, most important, because it's abundant. You know, CO2 water, they are very abundant in the body. You don't like it at all. So that's why it's very abundant and most powerful extracellular fluid buffer. Okay, so another one we have, which is not too significant, is the phosphate, inorganic phosphate buffer. Inorganic phosphate. Inorganic phosphate. So it's written like this. Okay, so this one is also, it's a very effective buffer, okay? But because it's very little in the extracellular fluid, it doesn't do much work. And why do I say it's very effective? Now, there's something known as the PK. PK. It's related to the pH. So the closer the PK value is to the normal pH of the body, which is 7.4, the more effective that buffer. You know, the whole idea is to make it hover around 7.4 to maintain that balance. So the closer the PK value, just read it up, it's more related to biochemistry, we'll not bother ourselves with that. So the PK value of this buffer system is 6.1. Why the PK value of this one is 6.8. So this one is a stronger, more effective buffer, but it's very little. So this that's why this one is the main extracellular fluid buffer. All right? So now let us go to intracellular fluid buffers. All right? ICF buffers. So why you have organic, inorganic phosphate as extra cellular fluid buffer. ICF buffers are organic, organic phosphates. Examples of them include ATP, that's adenosine triphosphate, adenosine diphosphate, ADP, adenosine monophosphate, AMP. 
you have others like glucose 6-phosphate. Okay, so these ones are organic phosphates, intracellular buffers, they buffer the intracellular fluid. Okay, then another is proteins. Proteins are very good intracellular fluid buffers. Then another one, you can put a question mark to it. Depends on how you want to look at it. It can be looked at as intracellular or extracellular. Why? Hemoglobin is a very good buffer. So intracellular because hemoglobin is located inside red blood cells. So inside the cell, intracellular. But also, these red blood cells are now floating. They float in extracellular fluid. So somehow, extra, it's still in the extracellular fluid, floating there, but it's inside the cell. So anyhow you want to put it, hemoglobin is a good. So these are buffers, the chemical buffers of the body fluid. So the next thing you're going to look at is the respiratory buffer, which is the second line of defense. That one, it's very straightforward, very easy. And it's a lot related to this bicarbonate buffer system. Now, you know, we said that the respiratory, when it forms carbon dioxide and water, is expired to the respiratory system. So whenever you have a lot of CO2, Anything that increases the carbon dioxide partial pressure will increase the acidity. Why? Anything that increases this will favor the formation of this weak acid. So you now have a lot of this weak acid, which will reduce the pH. Reduction in pH means increase in acidity. Okay? So in order to counteract that, there are chemi chemical receptors that sense that increase in acidity. And then they go to the brain and activate the respiratory center. And so your respiratory rate increases in order to flush out CO2. So the moment CO2 reduces because it's expired, the concentration of this one also reduces. So it helps to now bring down the acidity, all right? So that's how the respiratory system functions. So now we are done with the first line of defense, the second line of defense. So the third, you know, very powerful one is the renal system, all right? So but that would be in part two. So I've written quite a few books on renal physiology and also all other aspects of physiology so just check the description box you see the links to the soft copies of those books in okada books so download it for just a token and read so i get a better grasp of these things thank you